there's a certain subsection of people that over time came from certain videos. Uh, I did a Jump Force video on I believe Jotaro and Dio uh, probably about a year and a half ago now. I did a video on Giorno that got some good traction. I did a couple of uh, Jojolian videos from time to time. My title is Biscuits from Heaven. My profile picture is that of a biscuit with a Jotaro hat. And yet, I haven't uploaded a video on Jojolian in what I believe is now three months. Three months, I believe, since the last Jojolian video. I've read chapter 104, have the thumbnail of chapter 104, apparently never uploaded a video of chapter 104. I don't know. It didn't, it didn't come out. I don't know what to say. Thought I did, didn't. Chapter 105 came out a month ago. I'm just not getting around to reading it. It's been hectic. Um, you know, I'm doing shit I hate in school. It just drains me of my energy. Trying to be safe and all that shit drains me as far as COVID goes at school. Uh, all that bullshit. But I'm here now. This is the first chapter outside of what I believe is the longest arc in any JoJo ever. The uh, Eternal Calamity arc, I believe, is called uh, Endless Calamity. Endless Calamity Part 10. This is, I believe, Infinite Spin Bubbles or Invisible uh, Soap Bubbles. Same thing. <laughs> so, after the break, so I can get my intro done, I'm going to try to make this more concise. Try. Um, but y'all know, if y'all came from the OG JoJo videos, these are never that concise. This is for heaven, um... Everything began on that day, that equivalent exchange. I did read, that's pretty cool, it was like a spirit ball. I did read a little bit in the synopsis, like the first like 10 things that happened. Uh, it's a very short summary, so I assume there's not much that occurs. Yasuho and Josuke are to learn about calamities. I think this goes deeper into how they fuse. Well, people say that this series, like, doesn't have homosexual tendencies. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's kind of hard to deny that it has a little bit in, that, in there. But I think most JoJo fans go into this knowing what they are going to get. And if I remember correctly, uh, this was after the boss, I think the ship exploded, um, that, the, the, the rock boss that got killed by Holly Joestar, not Holly Joestar, um, Jobin's sister, the oldest one, um, not Holly, Holly Joestar is the mom of, uh, Joseph Fume Kuja, or Yoshikage Kiri on Joseph Fume, um, I, I got it, I can't think. The one with the hills, the stand that has like the hills effect and it stabs the dude in the head. That dude, you know, was fighting like a boat. And I think like the boat exploded or something like that. And uh, Yoshikage Cure was down bad. And Joseph Fume uh, had a, a, a had the knowledge of the branch. Um, and evidently he grabbed a fruit, crushed it. So in theory, this is the second time that Yoshikage Kira has um, ingested a Rokakako. Think about it like that, I suppose. It's a very interesting scene. So there was like a lot of semi-referencing of a predecessor to Josuke. I thought I was like 50, I was like 70, 30 between being a Joseph. Not Joseph, uh, Johnny and Jesus. Uh, 70, 30. I don't know. Maybe, maybe both are wrong, but that's what the vibe I got from moments in that chapter. That's looks badass in this moment, by the way. Something that does not exist in this world. Spent energy existed at one point in this world, though, didn't it? If you can't see them, they don't exist, they, and you probably can't control them either. The only thing that's there is the explosive spin. So it's like an evolution of spin energy. So the, the explosive spin bubbles come from 
the birthmark. So I don't know if he has natural control of them or what, but it seems he does now. That cane is like Sasuke sword. <laughs> to like modern on Chia to break that thing. These rock uh, things, Cretans, are so weirdly designed. They're so disgusting. I wonder go, what goes through uh, a Rocky's head sometimes with some of these designs. It's just so odd. <laughs> it was like a little heart thing. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, Toru was such a clown, bro. He has his blood on him. I wonder if that means anything. Oh my, dude, this is making my skin crawl. Jesus, this is weird. And the little door from the airplane is coming down still. It appears that it is aiming. I remember a couple chapters ago, I was wondering if it's aiming for Toru or for Yos um, Yasuho, whoever. And it appears it's coming from Yasuho. And as soon as she could, like, can she not just go inside the house? There's really nothing that she can do. <laughs> Nut King Cole. <laughs> Let's go, Nut King Cole. <laughs> do one more shot for what? What could this do that the other shots couldn't have done? She can do hit him? <laughs> just hit him and, like, oh, yeah, there you go, boom. I stopped the door. Can Nut King Cole stop that thing? Like, I, I, if we were legitimately, can it can it stop it? What do you do? Rip it off with like his bare hand? Why didn't he just do that from the jump instead of trying to shoot it off? I got a spirit ball in the looks like. <laughs> go go! <laughs> Goodbye, <laughs> just, just throw the spirit bomb at him. <laughs> a point blank range, my dude. Tor doesn't even like phase, he's not even phase at all. He doesn't even try to grab him or anything. Wait, did Yasuho throw him off and make him miss the shot? Oh my god, dude, what in the world? This dude's unbeatable. <laughs> I still don't see an actual way how someone can defeat this dude. Look at this, look how cold this panel is, look at this. I'm talking point blank range. Just like shrugs it off. Hey, the calamity, I guess, made Yasuho knock him off his pivot. I'm guessing that's what happened here, I'm not sure. Oh, so the thing evolved to his finger and knocked it off at the exact time. R.P. Josuke. Yeah, he, uh, he gave it the old, uh, the old college world, but, uh, I think it's GG for Yasuho here. Wait, is that a spin bubble? Wait, what? Am I, am I seeing this right? What happened to Yasuho here, by the way? Like, did she get hit or something? I'm not sure what happened. But, um, uh, is that Paisley Park? Or is that the Rock Kingdom? I think it looks like Paisley Park, doesn't it? That appears to be Paisley Park. What is happening here? What happens if she just moves? Like, she just jumped out the way. I don't think Nut King Cole. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So the bubble comes out of her phone. I guess she's getting ready to probably be killed. Wait, this is on hide until... <laughs> Wait. So the spin bubble transported through her phone and is looking to hit toward her? How many chat? How many pages? This is like what thirty pages.
this feels like such a short chapter, bro. I guess because like not that much happens in the grand scheme of things. Like Josuke tries to hit Toru and at the moment appeared to have failed, but evidently he didn't. I um How long was it? Yeah, 11 minutes. Usually we're like here for 19 minutes, but not that much happened. Um, I, it's just, just not that much happened. I don't know what to say. But that's probably the shortest chapter I feel like I've read in quite a while. It just came and went. Josuke tried to hit Toru again. Toru threw a rock even at him. The rock even threw him off his pivot. And somehow the spin bubble teleported through the phone. Oh, here's the thread on Reddit. Only the point of that in this chapter we see modification soft and wet. I don't really have evidence this, but I think the new power of soap bubbles may just justified by changing the appearance of the stand. I think another clue of this is the vapor we seen in the last chapter and the beginning I thought it was born this way first in the little cock -ca tubes, but when in contact with the sun to create the vapor in the last page we see Josuke shooting soap bubble and again the vapor covering soft and wet. This may be nothing. Again, this isn't really so I don't Oh yeah, okay. But yeah, villains do get upgrades. So part one Deep Pass Overdrive, Part 3, Star Platinum in the World, Part 5, Going Experience Requiem, and Part 7. That's interesting. That's an interesting theory. But yeah, I don't think that Iraqi thinks as clean as he used to, so maybe it won't, but that's interesting. It's possible. Um, yeah, those Iraqi humans, dude. He uh, can kind of create calamity in essence. I think the interesting thing about this part is that it's so centered around things like when fights happen, they're so creative. They're not like punching. Like if you go back to the one where he finds the soccer twins, like they Josuke and oh girl win because like they lit the guys on fire. Like it was like a, a like a stream of oil that like lights both of them on fire or something like that. Like it's they don't win by punching. Like like the strongest isn't really necessarily a concept and that's something that kind of got explored in part six at times um a little bit in part seven too like strategy has always been i think kind of big in the latter parts of the further you move from part three but this part seven and eight i think have employed it more especially part eight where power levels have just been i think massively nerfed uh in the grand scheme of things it's starting to kind of get a little bit more up, but I mean, I think I would still say part eight. Josuke probably is weaker than the base forms of just about every other Joe bro or Joe Joe except like maybe Jolene, maybe, maybe Jolene. Um, and then maybe John, well, probably Jonathan, yeah. If you if you if you thought of the, like the idea that a John uh, Jonathan or Joseph would see a stand, if that was the case, I think Joseph would probably win hand to hand contact against against uh just dude, I was the fuck his name. Joseph, Joseph, yeah, Joseph eight. Yeah, Gappy, he could probably be Gappy in a fight, but like he would have to pretty much get avoid avoid having to hit by and you know, initially it was just the the spin bubbles, but then it became like the you know, explosive bubbles. Explosive bubbles definitely kill Joseph. So I would say part one, part two, and maybe part six. I can see current Josuke being ahead of, but I mean, three, four, five. I'm talking based on two. He would get crushed. And I think even Tusk Act one may put up a fight. Well, he can't really walk with Tusk Act one, so. It would just be like a less mobile version of him. Because, I mean, in effect, the, the shooting of bubbles does the same. Well, he, he doesn't really use the bubbles in a shooting way. But even in the way he used the bubbles before, uh, before he really got control of it recently, um, still is pretty much the same way that, the same effect as how our boy Johnny uses his, I think Act 1 is just shooting nails, but he only gets like one nail or three nails, something like that. He, he would be a crush until like part three 
or act uh, act three. Act three, he would comfortably, I think, beat uh, Josuke, but it would take a while. So, yeah, I don't know. It's starting to become a part where power matters a little bit more, but it took a while, you know. So that's it for me. Um, that was a really weird chapter to end on, but as this guy says here, Maybe it's because of how big April was supposed to be for these dudes. Because in essence, I mean, the theory is that part six is announced in the anime as well as some other tie-in events between the universes. So April is supposed to be pretty pretty massive, I think. Um, and yeah, well, I'll see y'all later. I'm pretty sure.